Dear friends, the Salvation Army helps more than 1.7 million people in Canada, Bermuda each year. That's one person every 20 seconds. In wealthy, developed countries like Canada and Bermuda, it's difficult to imagine that children go hungry and that the homeless crowd into shelters because they can't afford a place to live and that some working people don't earn enough to buy adequate nutritious food. But this is reality in the 21st century. The Salvation Army believes that this is morally unacceptable and unnecessary. As an international Christian organization, the Salvation Army began its work in Canada in 1882. Our ministry is motivated by the love for God and the needs of humanity. Now, the largest non-governmental direct provider of social services in the country, the Salvation Army gives hope and support to marginalized and overlooked people in 400 communities from coast to coast. Allow me to share with you some of our work over the past year. In September 2010, when Hurricane Igor battered Bermuda and then blasted across much of Newfoundland, the Salvation Army offered practical assistance to families and individuals and helped restore a basic level of human comfort to those affected. In Newfoundland, the Salvation Army received more than $1.6 million from individuals and corporate donors to help families recover from some of their loss. Throughout the year, our emergency disaster services personnel provided food, hydration, and emotional and spiritual support to first responders, work crews, and people affected by disaster. More than 86,000 persons were assisted. As the Salvation Army transitioned into the Thanksgiving holiday, it was clear that for many Canadians, the recession was not over. A report released by the Army, Restocking the Shelves, indicated that demand for food programs, including food banks, meal programs, and street ministry units were on the rise. On November 19, the Salvation Army officially launched its Christmas Kettle fundraising campaign. Nationwide, close to 2,000 kettles on the street corners and at retail outlets collected $19 million, exceeding the Army's national target of $18 million. Early in the campaign, the Salvation Army launched the innovative Fill the Kettle program. Using Google technology, visitors to fillthekettle.com could locate and even make a secure online donation directly to the individual kettle in their community. In keeping with the Christmas spirit and in an attempt to raise awareness about the work of the Salvation Army throughout the country, our brass bands all of whom are volunteer members, participated in Santa Claus parades. In early December, thousands of Canadians walked or ran in the Santa Shuffle. What began as a small fundraiser for the Salvation Army Food Bank in Edmonton in 1990 is now an annual event taking place in 37 communities across Canada. Thanks to all those who shuffled with our sponsors that include The Running Room and our national presenting sponsor, All Weather Windows. For many, Christmas Day is a very lonely and sad time. Salvation Army centers across the country provided thousands of traditional turkey dinners. For homeless guests, this may be one time in the year when they get treated like real human beings. The Salvation Army believes that everyone should have access to life's basic necessities such as food, clothing and shelter. In March, we launched the Dignity Project with the primary goal of educating the public about what it means to live in poverty, emphasizing the belief that everyone is entitled to the fundamental right of human dignity. Every day, the Salvation Army works to eradicate poverty and the work of the volunteer is critical to the Salvation Army service delivery. In April, the Salvation Army formally recognized its volunteers during National Volunteer Week. In 2010, approximately 147,000 volunteers gave more than 
1.45 million man hours to the work of the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army announced May as Dignity Month in support of the Dignity Project and its annual Red Shield campaign. Events aimed at raising awareness about poverty in the 21st century were held across the country. In addition, a report, Canada Speaks, was released that provided a unique look into how Canadians feel about the more than 150,000 homeless living on the streets of our cities across our country. The Army believes that homelessness is more than the loss of a roof overhead and a place to call home. It's an attack on people's identity. Last year, we opened Booth Place Apartments at the Army Center of Hope in Halifax. 16 new, fully furnished bachelor apartments for men experiencing homelessness provide a safe living environment, while residents work to overcome obstacles preventing them from living independently. In Maple Ridge, British Columbia, a home was purchased whereby families without shelter can avoid the elements and live a more normal life. In June, close to 4,500 kids nationwide anxiously anticipated summer camp. For many, this was the only holiday they had. From week-long adventures away from home to day camps, the Salvation Army allows kids to flourish and feel important in a safe environment. In July, the Salvation Army released the results of its 2011 National Ridge Shield campaign held each May. $2.7 million was raised. This was welcome news given the demand of, for the Salvation Army services and the fact that it grew by more than 25% in 2010. Finally, the Salvation Army in Canada and Bermuda has a rich history of supporting the Army's world missions. We support countries struck by natural disasters such as tsunamis, droughts, and earthquakes. In countries devastated by poverty and illness, we focus on specific needs such as HIV AIDS prevention, agricultural development, education, clean water, and income generating programs. The critical work of the Salvation Army in restoring hope and dignity to men, women, and children would not be possible without your support. We are truly grateful to you, our friends and our supporters, who have shown confidence in our vision to be innovative, progressive, and effective as we work to empower hundreds of thousands of vulnerable Canadians trapped in homelessness, poverty, and addiction. They deserve our personal attention.